Hey everybody, hope you're doing amazing. Thank you so much for keeping up with New Times platforms. I hope we're giving you content that makes you happy that you resonate with. So today I'm joined by Iris Irumva. She's a professional certified coach. She does career coaching, helps people get to like the next step in their careers. And personally, I find the topic interesting. And I wanted to bring you on on my learning journey of like what professional coaching is, who needs it, when to stop, are there real coaches and fake coaches, basically everything. So Iris, before I get into it, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm very happy and excited to be here. Welcome back to the country. Thank you. So before we get anywhere, tell me a Tell me a little bit about your job. Like, what is professional coaching? How would you define it? That's a good question. Uh, first of all, um, I'm the founder of Lead Access, and Lead Access is a, is a professional uh, coaching firm that supports professionals at all levels, unlock their potential, and have a success, whether it being with their careers or leadership journey. Um, so, in a nutshell, if I was to sum up what's professional coaching entails I would say that it's a it's a journey it's not a one-stop type of situation experience it's more of um, a journey to self-development to self-growth and to self-fulfillment that sounds like what they tell you the first time you go to therapy like <laughs> we're going to get to your inner child unlock your potential really get into what's wrong with you so we can make it right with you so what's the difference between the two it's a good one. So uh, therapists are trying to look back uh -huh. uh, in your experience as a child. How did you go? What are, tr what are your triggers? How did you get to where you are? What are traumas that you have? But uh, coaching is more uh, future forwarding. It's more about looking at where are you are right now, why are you stuck, and what do you need to do to unstuck yourself, basically. So yeah. that's how I would put it sounds like coaching is more about what happened today and what is happening tomorrow exactly. rather than what happened yesterday in the past yeah yes, yes yeah so who needs professional coaching and where should a person start that's in need of it so i think that everybody needs coaching i never say that enough right mm -hmm. but who needs it is mostly the person that realizes, that is aware enough that they have gaps that they need to fill. Mm -hmm. And these gaps could be gaps in your career, it could be that you're stuck, you want to have a promotion, you don't know how to, you've been stuck in the same job for a long time. Like and 10 most, years, no promotion. It could be even two, three years, but you know when your cup is full, because when I'm having discussions with some of my clients, some of them would tell me, I don't have an impression that I'm bringing an added value to the job that I'm, you know, in the position that I'm in. And that's already a red flag, right? Another mm -hmm. red flag that you need to speak with a career coach could be that maybe <clears throat> you have conflicts within the team. Maybe you are, um, you want, you're a leader, you're a first time manager, and you need to know how to manage better uh, your teams. These are not things that we study. And even if they are studied, I don't think this is th something you wake up one day and you're like, okay, I have it all. I'm a manager. I can deal with all the I can deal with all. No, it doesn't work like that. It's a journey. We all continue to learn mm -hmm. to grow these leadership skills. Another reason why some of the clients come and speak to us is sometimes because um, they want to they, they have they want to improve their performance, but they don't know because feedback is not given to them by their managers in a way that supports them to understand where they have they need to be growing mm -hmm. but also i think in general we all need the coaching just like we need a medical checkup now sometimes people would never go to for medical checkups because they don't see they're in a crisis they mm -hmm. will wait until there's something and they'll be like okay we need to see a coach so yeah. i think it's mostly about waiting for that triggering moment uh, to start Mm -hmm. And that's why most people start. Most people start because they have an event that's happening and that's waking them up to, oh, we need to do something. So most of, it sounds like most of your clients first, first came to you because they were dealing with a challenge and they could not handle it on their own, right? Absolutely. So what? And no one should have to handle things on their own. And that is what differentiates, I think, uh, most people would go to their friends, mm -hmm. right? 
and they will get i'm sure if i ask your friend they they, you pro they probably coach you in one way or another when you're going through um certain emotional uh work experiences that are not positive mm -hmm. but when a friend gives you their perspective it's from um i would say a place of an emotive place because mm -hmm. they cannot they like you they want you to do good so mm -hmm. they won't have this detached feedback to give you that can support you take sound decisions some yeah. of them come can actually some friends can give you that perspective the best but, can give you that perspective but but yes the best friend can as well if you're mm -hmm. lucky enough but they, they've they've not been trained to do that yeah so you know how we all have our grandmas they will give you or aunties that give us advice on our health because they know they've experienced but it doesn't stop us from going to a doctor when yeah. we need to have um, medical treatment but most of them know but there is a reason why we step into like a professional setup to get that mm -hmm. type of help so what I'm hearing is a career coach is a doctor for your career absolutely um, what what patterns of like issues have you noticed with people who first start uh, professional coaching like what are they dealing with uh, most people that come to us for professional coaching some of them are um, as I said stuck in their careers some wants just something to spice up their work some want to resolve conflicts uh, with their managers or with their peers or with um, you know or some of them do not fit in the culture where they are and they want mm -hmm. to up upgrade they want to be interviewed for new positions and they're coming to us to to have coaching so they know how to win interviews uh, how to acquire the skills to communicate better as leaders so there's always a triggering event mm -hmm. um, and that is what makes coaching for us a success because it's about helping clients not give them solutions not like consultants mm -hmm. but trigger them through thought-provoking questions so they can come to answers on themselves. Basically give them a map and they'll find the way themselves. Wow. Absolutely, give them a map and they'll find the solution. They find the address themselves. Do you think, do you think it's, um, it's right when a person wants to find fulfillment in their job as opposed to their life? Like have you dealt with that issue as you've practiced? That's a good question. I think that most people have um, are thinking about mostly their careers because we all spend more than eight hours at work right mm -hmm. so when your workplace is not giving you the joy it's not giving you the challenge it's not uh, inspiring you to grow of course then you feel stuck so um, we have friends that help us go through life right but at work that's the missing part we often have we, we don't always rely on our HR teams to help us. We don't mm -hmm. always rely on our managers to help us. So who helps you when you need support at work? Work friends? Um, yes, they can. But they're they can. not professional. But they're not professionals. It's just like the auntie and the grandma that we just talked about. Now I get what you're saying. <laughs> yes. How, how does a person access a professional coach? Because it sounds like first, it's not easy to weed out who is certified to help you and who is not because True. everyone is a coach these days. Absolutely. With social media, I think like the first title that I see is coach. Wow. <laughs> how do you weed them out? Um, I think it's important to ask, uh, if you're a coachee, to ask a simple question to, you, um, to your coach. Mm -hmm. So you get to know more what is their style. So how we do things at Lead Access is that we first have a 30-minute clarity call to kind of assess uh, what are the needs of the person. Do we have the right uh, personality in the coaches that we have? Because most coaches, like it's just like on a football pitch, right? Certain mm -hmm. coaches will break you. They will try to squeeze all that's in you so that you can give the best. And mm -hmm. others would motivate you. They will give you um, small rewards so you feel like, oh, I can get there. So it's all mm -hmm. about finding the right personality of the coach so mm -hmm. that you can give uh, or get the best out of the experience. So what we do usually is we're going to have a clarity coach call where we're trying to assess what is it we want to achieve, 
who's the best coach for you and then we match you with the best coach and then you're go you're good to go so mm -hmm. um i'm not going to uh trash the circles of informal coaching because they help in general right they help people develop in one way or another right i think we have most mostly now access to nutritionist coaches health coaches etc because now um people that are experienced in a certain domain will mm -hmm. come and share that expertise that they have with their audiences and that's a beautiful thing to have however what differentiates the informal coaching and the formal coaching mm -hmm. is the pricing in itself most uh, certified coaches are expensive unfortunately and mm -hmm. that's what makes the difference but beyond being a little bit expensive than the informal coaches the good part in it is that they have the best practices for it they have mastered they've trained a lot of people they've experienced what it is to work in multiple um, uh, fields? fields and markets and that's a good thing to leverage on when you're looking for a coach but it's always good to question and almost interview your coach to find out what what are their techniques how often do they want to meet you uh, what is their style Mm -hmm. what is your what are you supposed to do and what it, what are they supposed to do what is the role of each one of you yeah. to have that understanding in the first session before you even engage that is the number one advice that I would give wow so um, I, I like to think of coaches as very good mothers to help you <laughs> achieve your potential yes so um, absolutely I love um, how it's described I'm still on the part of them um, certified coaches charging more mm -hmm. what's to stop uh, what's to do besides the prices how do you tell a coach apart because someone could hear our conversation and go be like i'm a coach produce <laughs> some documents and, and add two zeros to the regular price yes. so like what what else differentiates them like what's one yes. one red flag that you can pick up on very mm -hmm. easily i think the there are bodies that certified coaches mm -hmm. icf is probably one of the biggest that is known i'm also an icf certified that's why i would pin down to that one okay. so um when when you're thinking of how do i screen coaches and find out who is the best one for me mm -hmm. you can ask them recommendations who have you trained who can uh, certify that they've gotten this this exercise this um, who can certify on your behalf that mm -hmm. they have experienced your coaching but also mm -hmm. if a coach is claiming to be a generalist that's a red flag um, and again life coaching can be one component but life coaching is really um, very broad if you're looking to go to, to, to develop if you're looking to develop your career you shouldn't be going to a life coach. Mm -hmm. You should be going to a career coach. If mm -hmm. you want to know how to navigate a life challenges, you should be going out to a life coach. If you're looking to have um, a coach and you want to know how best they are, ask them mm -hmm. what is their specialty. Uh, seek to find out how many people they've coached mm -hmm. or what has been the experience, what people say about their coaching style or reviews. results. Like basically reviews. Yeah, so that's that's a good one. If they if they have their hands in every pot, they're not the one. <laughs> it could be a red flag. Yeah, yeah. So coaching sounds very intense. What are the benefits? Like it's very expensive from what I hear. So what makes it worth it? Like, what would a, a mid a mid level manager or someone that's just starting out and like trying to find their way into a career benefit from getting? professional coaching um, the first benefit that I can speak about obviously from experience as a coachee and from experience as a coach myself is that a performance wise you you gain a lot from a coach perspective from a session with a coach you can see your performance going up because they tackle or they challenge you when it comes to your mindset that is a beautiful thing because that is where all the information the action are locked into our mindset mm -hmm. so if the mindset is unlocked we can see our full potential 
So that's mm -hmm. the first uh, advantage performance-wise. The second, I would say the benefit of it is to know how to navigate life uh, obstacles. And that is something that most of us go, uh, we go through life on our own. We're sometimes ashamed of opening up with our friends, especially when we're in dark uh, seasons. And sometimes if you open up uh, to our friends, we don't even have uh, the right uh, advice that we need to get to the next level. We will get our friends to rent with us, but are they really pushing us to get to a level where yeah. we're like, okay, we're content now, we're happy, we're getting a promotion, we're changing jobs. We've been stuck in this job for five, 10 years. It's time to get going to the next level. So mm -hmm. that is the, the typically experience or benefit that you get from being coached. And I also feel that um, an added value that coaching can offer is to have a professional listening ear, someone that you know you can count on when things go south mm -hmm. to get a sound perspective on what needs to be done. Because it's not emotional at all. Exactly. And we are em emotional beings. We, uh, we will take most of our decisions through our emotions and mm -hmm. sometimes we need to balance it. Yeah. Coaching sounds like such a journey. So is there an ideal time to stop or is it a till retirement, the worst part kind of entanglement? <laughs> so I want to take this into two perspectives. The first perspective is from a leader perspective. As a leader, you get to where you are because people pour into you, right? Coaches support you, uh, you get mentors, you get people that are giving you and helping you get to that level. It comes to a time where now you have to give back. Mm -hmm. And by giving back, what I mean is what you received, all these coaching skills that you received, you need to be giving them back to younger professionals, mm -hmm. right? So there is a time it stops, but I, w I don't want to say it stops, it really pauses, so you give back. But for the other perspective, which is from someone that is learning, a young professional, mm -hmm. they should be looking at, at that as a life journey because learning never stops so you can pause you can take a break from time to time but it's always good to, to have that as a as a way or style of living incorporating that as a style of living i was looking at a study a few uh, days ago mm -hmm. that says that in the u.s um, young professionals spend at least 300 dollars towards self-development including wow. coaching mentorship and other things that uh, that empowered them to get to unlock that potential that we're talking about mm -hmm. so um, I know that the challenge is not in Africa is that young people don't necessarily have the means to invest in that but most the, what we need to do is the mindset first with. yes uh, those that even have the job don't even have the mentality to seek for growth through uh, to seek for growth through self-development mm -hmm. so I think um, there over there in the US and everywhere else is becoming more of a trend mm -hmm. uh, in Africa we're a little bit still behind but that's where we're going but also we're used to you know um, a community and society advisory type of uh, relationship which yeah. on the other side they lack and that is why maybe it's more embraced and yeah. now for, for us, it's going to take a few uh, years to get there. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that we're not alone. And the good thing is that community is how we develop ourselves. We just need to feel a bit more uh, challenged through coaching. That sounds interesting. I've actually learned a lot. So last question. What would you say to aspiring certified coaches or professional coaches people that actually want to help pe other people in the future well, how, should they start pouring into themselves yes. like how does it go what's what, what's the what's the trend what's the deal i think anyone that wants uh, that feels the calling to coach should definitely seek to be a certified coach because you learn a lot about the principles of coaching the do's and don'ts uh, how you uh, treat the clients the confidentiality principles and especially you learn how to have the mindset that is going to support your clients get there so if you're hungry to see people succeed i would say get yourself a certified uh, coach and come knock at lead access doors because we're 
hiring all the time uh, certified coaches so we can go on this journey to empowering leaders at all levels. Thank you so much for making the time. I've learned so much and I hope you guys have as well. Thank you so much, Iris. Have Thank a you good so much rest for having me. And have a great week too. Thank you.